Welcome back to Wheatland, Missouri for the Lucas Oil Products Diamond Drag Boat Nationals. A beautiful day out here, an unbelievably cool complex, and the seven second hitters are having a blast putting on a show for the fans. There are not many places they get water conditions like this. We talked about the fact that the lake was designed to knock down the wakes. It's smooth, it's fast. You got no excuses if you can't dial your boat in here. All right, round two action ready to begin here as we whittle these guys down, try and get them to our semifinals, of course, and eventually we'll find our two finalists. Ron Chivalet and Mike Lamb will do battle here. Ron Chivalet, the number three qualifier, got a break in the early round when Slug Hefner's boat wouldn't run the number. He was able to ease off and just kind of slide through, but I don't believe it's going to be quite that easy if he wants to advance on. Yeah, because Mike Lamb put a 703 up on the board. At an 025 red light, fortunately his competitor went red a little bit earlier. Oh, that's a big time move on the starting line for Chevrolet. He stays on the plus side of the seven second zone. He's going to head right into the next round. But no, that's when you need your guy on the shore with the radio going, slow down, slow down. 687, he was way out in front. He breaks out by a ton, and Lamb gets a little bit of a gift right there. Yeah, no doubt Lamb pushed him out because Lamb was just dead late and did what he had to do to get one back. Robert Lees will come up here in our next pair. This again in round two action, and he'll line up alongside Jim Richards and the alcoholer. Robert Lees, the number four qualifier. Remember, there were four boats within two hundredths of a second. Robert Lees brought his Arkansas machine up and qualified the number 14 spot, but he got around Tim Ortiz in the opening match. Richards broke out last time, but not as bad as his competitor was almost perfect. And another great side-by-side -side battle here. This one will go to Richards. Look at that light. An 035 light puts an 03 up on the board. Lees tried to push him out, but it didn't happen. Lees basically had no room. Jim Richards, good on the starting line, close enough to the number. There was no possible way Robert was going to sneak in there. And yo, it's no time for a trip to the beach. Hey, yeah, that could be a little rough on the bottom of those things. At least that was a nice soft landing. How about on board with Jim Richards? You want to know what it's like to go 160 miles an hour across Lake Lucas? General Tire is going to take us for a ride. Doesn't look scary at all from there. <laughs> or here. Good point. Inside that cockpit is a little different. All right, Marty Logan and Randy Benson going at it here. And well, I mean, every one of these names, it's just one bigger than the next. These guys are longtime competitors, true veterans of the sport. And Marty Logan, one of those guys that's really hungry. And this is a big time matchup for the reason that it's a two for one. The winner of this has no scheduled opponent in the next round. It'll be a by run straight to the semifinal. Lindmar's sponsorship on the side of Randy Benson's boat. Also big in the sport of asphalt drag racing. Reaction times not spectacular for either driver, but better for Marty Logan. Another great race to the stripe. Marty Logan's going to pull it off. Another breakout. Look at the math here. Margin of victory, two thousandths of a second. Logan was two thou closer to the number than Benson. They were side by side, both of them going for the stripe. No way that the guys on the shore could say, slow down, you're going too quick. They just didn't know, so they went for it. Two thousandths and Rockstar Energy Drink takes us for a ride. That's 174 miles an hour across the finish line. And that'll get you a date with Leslie. At least for an interview. Marty Logan, you find yourself in the winner's circle on a double break by only two thousandths of a second. What's going on out here today that makes Lucas Lake so fast? Well, like I said, it's, it's Forrest Lucas has done a great job. I mean, this is the premier facility on the planet right now. Just a beautiful facility, and we're just so glad to be here. Double breakout that time against Randy Benson. He just broke out a little bit more than we did. We won it by two thousandths of a second. We'll take the win. We're glad to go in the next round. And as I mentioned, in the next round, he'll have a bye run. So a little testing tune in the middle of a Sunday afternoon. All right, talk about big matchups. We'll continue on as Travis Tuttle will line up alongside Sean Reed, of course, the champion side of the category as well. And there's a look at Travis Tuttle, his boat called the Short Fuse. In qualifying, these two boats were three thousandths of a second apart. You talk about identically matched. Sean Reed was a little bit better in the opening round, but then Vic Esposito does tend to bring out the best of people. For Sean Reed by some one tenth of a second. You can't do that to the champ, or, or can you? 
Unbelievable as Reed breaks out. Typically, you would never see him do that with that size of lead. He always has somebody on the shore, but unfortunately, he will break out by 13 thousandths. The wind goes to the other side on a dead-on run. Watch the red boat nearest the camera. It actually looks right here like Wag the tail got a little bit sideways. He's going to drive it all the way to the finish line. Seven double O and a little bit of good fortune. Makes Travis Tuttle into the next round. Travis Tuttle, your team has been super consistent today, especially running those 003s and 002s today. Yeah, we've been doing good all the way since Augusta, running O's. That's the first double O, but uh, we just keep pushing it. We don't want to get any closer than that, though. Yeah, I would think that's probably close enough. Charles Duncan and Daryl Kinley will be our next pair here. Daryl Kinley with a 706 in round number one. And Charles Duncan, he struggled out there as he just muttered on through Brian Sanders and broke out. So Charles had to repair the boat, get back out here, and make the call for round two. Yeah, Charles Duncan is kind of an unknown quantity at this exact moment in time. Have they got the boat fixed in the last round? It only went 25 miles an hour. Well, it's going to go faster than 25 miles an hour, but you see that red light on the bottom of the Christmas tree. Duncan squeezed the tree. He comes up red. Daryl Kenley, the number two qualifier, charging on with another solid run. Boy, Duncan with a beautiful passer at that 7039 just missed the ball, was way too early. And Kenley will go to the next round. So now Kenley has put a 7061 on the board and a 7069. He has a very consistent boat. Geico takes a side by side for a great look at the difference between the standard hydro on the left and the outrigger boat. That's kind of the latest technology on the right side. Daryl Kenley, you look super happy about that picture perfect run down the track. I'm very happy. I'll tell you what, that was a great pass for us. We're in a 706. Um, but we just love being here at this new Lucas Oil drag strip. It's a perfect facility, and I just love being here. This is great, guys. He's echoed all the words from everybody we have spoke to so far this season. When we come back, it'll be round three in the Pro Modified category. <laughs> 